lenses and accessories to get for your Sony a7 III. What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong. Now, some of you guys might be coming into the Sony Alpha universe fresh off the boat. The Sony a7 III might be your first camera, or perhaps you're a Sony Alpha veteran coming in from the 6000 series looking to see what you should pick up before your a7 III arrives. So this video is meant to help with that. But before we get started, for those of you guys who are in the Los Angeles area, who are on the fence about getting the Sony a7 III, well guess what? On March 9th and March 10th at Sammy's Camera, Sony will be having an event with the Sony a7 III there for you to demo. So you can go there, ask all the questions you want, really just pick up the camera, test it on, see if it is for you. And Sammy's will likely have a sweet, sweet pre-order deal for you if you show up. My good friends Scott Robert Lim and Francisco Joel Hernandez will be having a portrait and lighting workshop on those two days as well. So if you've been curious about how to start taking portrait photos or how to light your subject better, those are the two classes that you might want to sit in in. Also, if you have some Sony gear that needs to be clean, Sony Pro Support will be there. So bring your camera stuff, get them clean, and maybe get some free Sony swags. You didn't hear it from me. All right, let's get this list started. The first lens that I can highly recommend is the 24 to 105 f4. And this is a recent zoom lens that I fell in love with. I got a chance to use it for about five days in Las Vegas during a camera convention show. And let me tell you, this is a great run and gun lens that covers a variety of different focal lengths, which allows you to be versatile in different types of shoots, whether you be doing portraits, kids sports, fashion, and even events. The image quality is fantastic and we actually have a video where we go into in-depth discussion about the performance of this lens. So click up here to check it out. But if you're looking for a prime lens with a much wider aperture than f4 but still want a zoom lens of some sort to keep that versatility for any types of shooting situation and still want to keep everything within that $1,000 to $1,300 price range, Here's an alternative for you. Consider the 28 to 70 kit lens and the Zeiss 55 millimeter f1.8. When I was an APS-C shooter, I often found the 50 millimeter to be a little too close because of that crop factor. When you mount a 50 on something like an A6000, you're getting roughly 82 and a half to 85 millimeters in focal length. But when you mount that 50 millimeter on a full frame camera, you get 50 millimeters and 50 millimeters is the perfect focal length for any types of shoots. Plus the Zeiss 55 millimeter 1.8 is highly regarded as one of the sharpest lenses that you can get for the Sony Alpha cameras. And actually I'm shooting with the 55 millimeter right now. Look at this beautiful bokeh that the 1.8 gives off. Plus that wide open aperture is advantageous in low light. It's so small, it's so tiny, it's so lightweight that it is a breeze to carry around with you. Yes, the Zeiss 55mm does have a hefty price tag, but I know a lot of people who have this lens do not regret it at all. Do yourself a favor, don't even consider the Sony 50mm 1.8, go straight for the Zeiss 55mm 1.8. In regards to the 28 to 70 zoom lens, that is a basic kit lens for just $200 more if you get it via the a7 III bundle. Now I'm gonna admit, it's not the best lens, it's not the sharpest lens, but it will get you out the door as a versatile zoom lens. So just use it for now until you get more lenses later. However, if you plan on shooting a lot of portraits, instead of getting the 55 millimeter, consider the Sony 85 millimeter 1.8 instead. It's a great budget portrait lens. It's incredibly sharp. And in my opinion, the image quality rivals that of its G Master counterpart, which is a thousand dollars more. If you're switching over from Canon and you know, you need some time to sell off those lenses, or maybe you don't want to give up that sweet, sweet 24 millimeter 1.4 lens, consider getting the Sigma MC11 adapter. You can use your Canon and Sigma lenses with your Sony a7 III in the meantime, but keep in mind, it's not an end all be all solution. You will not get all the functionalities of the camera and lenses when you use an adapter. The focus will not be as fast and will not be as accurate. 
eye autofocus may not work depending on the lens that you're using. Plus, I've had times where my cameras froze because I used an adapter. So just keep that in mind if you want reliability. Other than that, the adapters are a great way to help you out during your transitional period. Now I've seen the Sigma MC11 adapter for about $149 brand new, and that is a great price for one of the best autofocus adapters in the market. So some of the basic accessories that you can get for the Sony a7 III is of course the SD cards, extra batteries, and a screen protector. For SD cards, you don't need the UHS-2 card unless you plan on doing a lot of rapid fire shots, but don't get cheap SD cards either. Get reliable ones. My personal recommendations are the SanDisk Extreme and Extreme Pro. Been using these for about a couple of years now and they've been rock solid. Batteries, you gotta have multiples and I recommend having at least two backups. Unfortunately, as far as I know, there are no third party batteries for the Sony FZ100s, but the reliability of the OEM Sony batteries are just unmatched. These batteries will last for years to come. However, if you are looking for a third party charger, I believe new Moa and Wasabi has some very affordable dual battery chargers for under $20. Next up is the screen protector and this is a must. Your screen is left exposed. So please, please, please protect the back of your screen. Otherwise it will be very expensive to fix. I've used a handful of Sony a7 cameras from other people and just seeing scratches on their screen just pains me so much. I personally use the Sony screen protectors. Yes, they are a bit expensive, but I've seen other people use some other ones and I've seen their screen protector just comes right off after a few usage. And don't get the matte, matte screen protector either. It's supposed to help with the sun, but in my opinion, I don't I don't really see how it how it how it helps. I've had my Sony screen protectors on all of my cameras since day one, on my A7R2 in particular for about two years now, and it's been holding up really well. Moving on, there is no Play Memories app on the Sony a7 III. You can still transfer photos from your camera to your phone via the Play Memories app on your phone, but say bye-bye to your in-camera time-lapse app. So if you are into doing time lapses, consider picking up an intervalometer. If you're looking for speed lights, flash, strobes, whatever, a lot of Sony shooters right now are shooting with the Flashpoint series. There's a lot to cover here, which I can't get into everything in this video, but luckily I've already made an extensive guide on the best flash to get. So click up here to check out my guide. Now for my budding video shooters, if you're planning to use a Sony a7 III to shoot a bit of videos or even vlog, consider the Rode Video Micro. It's tiny, it's lightweight, it's small, but hey, it gets the job done. And if you are planning to vlog, consider getting yourself a mini tripod. The one that I can personally recommend is the Manfrotto mini tripod. It is incredibly sturdy. Now, I know we didn't really talk about wide angle lenses for vlogging, so just really quickly, here are some of my recommendations. The Zeiss 16-35 f4 or the Sony 16-35 2.8 G Master. I personally have been using the Zeiss 18mm f2.8 bodice, great wide angle lens for vlogging. But if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable, there is the Sony 10 to 18 f4 and the Sigma 16mm f1.4. The last two are APS-C lenses, there are, they are for crop bodies, but your Sony a7 III will be able to shoot in both full frame and in crop mode, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. And your video quality will still look just as amazing even if you are using crop lenses. Now, last but not least, this is something that I cannot recommend enough. This is my favorite strap system, the Peak Design Slide Light Strap. Just look at this. I can attach this strap around my neck to the camera with ease. I can quickly detach it when I don't want to use the strap. How crazy is that? Your camera's gonna come default with the strap that you're gonna have to thread through and do a whole bunch of things before you get it on. And then when you wanna take it off, it's just a hassle and you don't, it just gets in the way of shooting. But Peak Design Slide Light allows you to have that flexibility when you don't want to use the strap or when you do want to use the strap. This is amazing, I love it. This is the camera strap to get. 
All right, guys, I need your help. Am I missing anything in this video? Is there something that you think is a must have for somebody who's coming into the Sony Alpha universe or stepping up into their full frame game? Let me know. Also, the pre-order links for Sony a7 III is available in the description box below. So please check that out. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.